Ho ho, me hearties, a very good morning to you. It is me, Scotty McClure, Monday morning, nothing gets past me. And here we are live streaming live on Facebook Live. A very, very warm welcome to you if you've just joined us. Great to have you with us. And of course, we pop up each weekday morning between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Now, you never, ever, ever miss a moment of Scotty McClure or you miss a moment of life. This is where the world gets together for one hour of sense and sensibility, for one hour of all these interesting things. And you're very welcome. Good morning, says the wonderful Gordon Robertson. Good morning, Gordon. Lovely to have you with us and dinky do. Do you ever get the impression it's been a short night? So there you are. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome, 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 I say. And uh, do join us. Uh, your job, of course, is to do quite a lot of sharing. And I thought this morning we'd also try, think of somebody and share with them. Just type their name in, <coughs> in uh, Facebook Live Speak. You're a minute late in popping up. Ah, your clock must be wrong this morning, Gordon. You need to get it adjusted. Uh, good morning, Scotty. Dinky you do, says Gareth Collins. Good morning, Gareth. Excellent stuff. Darren James Lamb. Good morning, Scotty. Dinky you do. Um, if I were a minute late, what happened in that minute, Gordon? I want a blow-by-blow -blow account. Wonderful stuff. Scotty McClure. Few people saying they had corona symptoms in December and January, says Ali Bryson. Yes, absolutely, Ali. Um, I understand. Good morning, Scotty McClure. How are you today, says the wonderful Kareem Zakaria. I am great, Kareem. Good to have you with us. And thank you for all your wonderful support. Uh, good morning, Scotty. Hope you're keeping well, says John McClucky. Excellent, John. Yes, and a good dinky do to you, I say. Now... And uh, what I'm doing here, I'm just working out what we're going to be doing. I'm just going to uh, get this sorted. I don't have to look down now because I've raised the device up. That's clever, isn't it? And uh, Nikki Graham's watching. Brilliant. Gordon Sterling's watching. Thank you, Scotty. Top of the morning to you. I thought we'd play a little game later this morning. Who am I? So think of a character you'd like to be. And uh, we've all got to guess who it is. Um, we'll have somebody who's dead. <coughs> Scotty, do you remember Mr. Martin? Says Dara James Lamb. I do remember Mr. Martin very well. Mr. Martin, yes. Dinky do, I've told 10 to tell 10. I haven't really, but I might. Oh, James, I bet you actually have. You're very, very good that way. The wonderful James Cridland, one of our finest broadcasters, but... On top of that, one of our finest technicians, a man who was way, way, way ahead of his time in terms of uh, digital technology and the internet. Wonderful to have you with us, James. Good morning, Scotty. And uh, Christine Garvin. Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Christine. Lovely to have you with us. Suzanne McFadden, welcome. Uh, I've shared Scotty McClure. It looks like an amazing day for the garden. And a walk with the dog, yes, after an hour of Scotty McClure. You need to set yourself up for the day, Kareem. Never miss a second of McClure, or you miss a moment of life. Yes, indeed, we've uh, we've discussed that. Uh, Stephen Menzies, did you do good morning? You're a top man. How do you manage it? You squeeze everything in. You look after all of us in Scotland, keep us safe, keep the rail network safe, and you manage to join us for a few minutes as well. Scotty, I can only see half of your face. Well, you need to adjust your equipment so you can see all of my face. Can anybody else just see half of my face? Is it the lighting? Uh, Jackie McCauley Brody, thank you. Good morning, Scotty. Half's better than nothing, as they say. Hope uh, you're all safe and well. Jackie McCauley Brody. Thank you for your kind felicitation. Very important. Um, Christine Garvin, so there we are. And uh, I don't know what, what you're at there, Christine. That sounds a bit strange. Yes, I don't think we'll have that. Uh, so there we are. Um, no, 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 we're not on that. We're not on that. We'll take that one out. Uh, good morning, Scotty, says Stephen. Good morning, Stephen. Lovely to have you with us. Dinky do, would you starve yourself for Scottish Independence, Davy Dingalinga? 
doesn't sound a very Scottish name, the Dingalingas. Anybody know the Dingalingas? Um, David Dingalinga, no, nobody should have to starve themselves for Scottish independence. <coughs> the reason that Scotland united with uh, Westminster, with, uh, with England, in 1707 was because the Scots were starving. So there we are. And it was interesting, I saw a comment today about uh, the Scottish Secretary, you know, that Scotland has to take its lockdown advice from Westminster. And I thought, this is an interesting appointment. Is Scottish Secretary, which used to be Secretary of State for Scotland, is he representing the Cabinet in Scotland or Scotland in the cabinet. And I think that brief must have changed over the years and should change because I would have thought the uh, whole idea of having a Secretary of State for Scotland is to represent Scotland at Westminster and perhaps to relay the Scottish government's instructions. Because you see, the interesting thing, one of the reasons we became uh, into one union under the Act of Union, because it was 50-50. So Scotland should make half of the decisions anyway. Probably all the decisions now that were uh, re-devolved. So there you go. I was watching GME before you came on. Ross King, the Glasgow highlights. So there we are. Fantastic, Ross. Wonderful broadcaster, Gordon. Top man, Ross King. Remember uh, Ross very, very well. We both auditioned for Scottish television on the same day. Fantastic. Good morning, Scotty. It's a Scott Blything. Good morning. Thomas Biden has just joined us. Dinky do. Finley Morris, come on, it's time. Yes, guys, if you can think of somebody who's on Facebook, you want to tell them. Type their name in as well as sharing. Because we need these figures up. There should be at least a hundred watching now. Darren James Lamb, you're looking well, Scotty. I hope the family's well. We're all well, Darren James. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope you and your family are keeping well and coping with everything. This is why we've done the pop-ups. Uh, good morning, Scotty. I'm a bus driver in Liverpool. Uh, I'm taking many key workers into work, NHS workers, giving us drivers masks and gloves is so generous and thoughtful. Surely annual NHS day after this is over. Yeah, but did you see a lot of the people don't trust Boris, about half of them don't trust Boris not to sell off the NHS when this is over. Very interesting. Um, NHS day after this, thanks to all key workers. Yes, and thank you to you for your bus driving. Highton via City Centre, all oh, that's Highton via City Centre. Thomas Beden, dinky do. So there you are, Finlay saying thank you to Thomas Beden for getting him up to watch Scotty McClure. Scotty McClure, schools are back today. Homeschool for all the young people. Technology is playing its part and closing the attainment gap. Excellent, Kareem Zachariah. Yes, indeed. Um, nope, can see your mush under your bonnet, says Christine Garvin. I wonder why she's saying she'd only see half my face. As I say, half's better than nothing, isn't it? Are you, uh, Davy Dingalinga, are you Scotland's? What a strange thing to say, Davy Dingalinga. Uh, yeah, strange comment. We'll take that out because it's in poor taste. So there we are. Uh, morning from the kingdom. Dinky do, says Andy Ray from the kingdom of Fife. The wonderful Royston Mayor's watching. Good morning, sir. Delighted to have you with us. One of the finest television producers ever. Morning, Scotty. Hope you're in good spirits today. Finley Morris, Malcolm McNeil. Good morning, Lord Ho Ho. Yeah, that's a bit strange, Malcolm. We'll take that out. That's in poor taste. That's right. Just take that wee comment out. Yes, that's in very poor taste. Uh, Calvin Allen's watching. Thank you, dear. Uh, no, we don't have the powers to decide our own lockdown. Is that right, Ali? Well, we voted for the powers to decide these things. Health is devolved. So I would have thought we've got our own chief medical officer of health for Scotland. Um, so I, I don't see what the problem is there. It's interesting. I'm just wondering if the Secretary of State for Scotland, if that appointment has become, or Scottish Secretary has become sort of like Secretary of State for the Colonies. We used to have that. 
uh, the Secretary of State for the Colonies. I'm trying to think who the Secretary of State for the Colonies was. A uh, one of our wonderful ones, Malcolm McDonald, Ramsay McDonald's son. I think, check this up for me. He was Secretary of State for the Colonies. Check that up, though. Calvin Allen's watching Dinky Doo. The one for Marcus Miles has joined us. Good morning, Marcus and Dinky Doo. Uh, Ian Kerr's watching David Diston. Thomas Speedon, I'm a top sharer, Scotty. Always telling 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Excellent. You've just reminded me. We need to get sharing. So there we are. Excellent. Good man. So I'll just share, and uh, I'll share to the big Scotty McClue page. Did you all get that through to like it? The wonderful Beverly Lyons is watching. What a superb lady. Top, top media lady, Beverly Lyons. Yes, big journalist and all the rest of it. And a great lady, full of fun, fantastic. And from a wonderful show business family. Her, uh, her lovely dad, Ben, Ben Lyons, BBC producer for many, many a year, and used to produce Jimmy Shand, the great James Shand. And the reason that that um, reached our ears and our televisions was due to Beverly's dad, Ben. So there you go, fantastic. Beverly, lovely to have you with us. Am I right? Let me know if I've got all that right. Uh, Dinky Doo Finlay, Vintage McClure, says Thomas Peden. Absolutely. There we are. We had a dafty on the other day going, oh, I thought this all went coming. He doesn't realise we don't have any calls. We can take calls on the Skype, but only trusted calls, of course. Uh, good morning, Scotty. Dinky Doo, hope you're good, says Davy Howie. Dinky Doo, Davy. I thank you, sir. How about actually giving them adequate pay, ending the ridiculous shift patterns, and giving them the equipment they need to do their jobs, says Ali Bryson, talking, I suspect, about the National Health Service. We'll see if it's going to be flogged or if we've still got it. Uh, Kenny Hyde, good morning, Scotty. Kenny Hyde, great car man, very, very clever man, and a great businessman as well. What Kenny Hyde does not know about cars is not worth knowing. Lovely to have you with us, Kenny. Good morning, Scotty. We had a walk round the west end of Greenock last night for our daily exercise. What wonderful big houses. Octavia Terrace was particularly beautiful. Were they for the top brass? Uh, in the shipyard, sugar houses, etc. The only sad thing is they've been halved or quartered. Have a great day and stay safe. Now, Octavia Terrace, the Greenock used to be feud, and the local estate was the Ardgown Estate. And the Ardgown Estate, the family in the Ardgown Estate, a delightful family, were the Shaw Stewarts. And the Shaw Stewarts were extremely kind to Greenock. I mean, I know they got the rent from the properties and the few duties, but they were extremely kind to Greenock. Lovely, lovely people. And one of the Shaw Stewarts married Lady Octavia Grosvenor, who I think was born in, I think Lady Octavia was born in 1863 or something like that. No, no, it must have been earlier. Sorry, she maybe got married in 1863. I can't remember exactly. Anyway, she was Lady Octavia Grosvenor, who was the daughter of the Duke of Westminster. And she married a Shaw Stuart, and uh, they called this beautiful big terrace after her, Lady Octavia. So Octavia Terrace. What about that? Never a dull moment. And uh, yes, a lot of the houses in Octavia Terrace belong to shipbuilders and sugar people. There's one that is flats now, and I remember it, and it was a huge castellated mansion just along from the Wanderers Rugby Football Club heading towards Gurukh. And um, it's it's a block of flats now. That was a great castellated mansion, and that was the Fergusons, the shipbuilders. And if you came further along, you had uh, the walkers, the sugar refiners. So your two great places to stay in Greenock were Octavia Terrace and Newark Street. These were the two great streets. So there you go. Susan Forrest watching. Good morning, Dinky Doo. 
Did all of you arrange my schedule to listen for an hour? Always learn something new from your broadcast. Stephen Menzies, never a dull moment on here, I tell you. And uh, here's a lovely one for you, Stephen Menzies, you will enjoy. You're a shipbuilding man. Greenock had a wonderful shipyard called Caird's Yard, and the Caird's lived in New Ark Street. Two big houses, Bel Air and Stone Lee. And um, there was a lovely little church, one of the first Presbyterian churches post-Reformation in Scotland. I think it was actually the first. And it was known as the, uh, the Old West Kirk. And Harland and Wolfe wanted to build a shipyard beside where Cairns was. And they moved that church stone by stone and as many graves as they could along to the end of the Greenock Esplanade. And it was reopened in, I think, 1925 or something like that. But they moved the whole church stone by stone. And you can to this day visit the Old West Kirk. Um, I think that's still what it's called. I don't know. Somebody will correct me. And um, Highland Mary had been buried there. Burns Highland Mary. And I think she, I don't think she's buried. I think they took her up to Greenock Cemetery. So there you are. Fascinating bit of history for you. Henry Anders is watching. Good morning. Lovely to have you with us. Ali Bryce says, you misread my comment. I said, we do have the powers. Do we, Ali? Let me read back just to see. Well, I'm so sorry if I've misread that, dear boy. So there we are. There we are. I shall pop back and just check. We do have the powers. There we go. Um, if you're the FM, what would your exit strategy be and why, says Ali. So there you go. We've got that one, Ali. Excellent stuff. Anyway, doesn't matter if I've misread. I'm sorry about that. So we do have the powers to decide on our own lockdown. Excellent stuff. So there we are. Yes, so the health workers adequate pay and sort out the shift patterns. Um, who have we got here? Henry Anderson, yes indeed. Thomas Peden shouting on Marcella Foy to come and join us. Guys, can we all put in somebody we know who is in Facebook and we want them to join us? Pop that in and can we all share? I haven't shared a thing yet and uh, we'll be losing people because they were going, oh, I wish I'd known that was on. That's a great favourite, isn't it, in Scotland? Uh, even if somebody did see something, they're, oh, I don't, I, I didn't see your show. Ah, you did. Morning, Scotty, says the wonderful John Jones. Good morning, John. Billy Hunter has joined us. Thanks, Scotty. Love you, says Beverly Lyons. Mwah. And you, my darling, lovely, lovely to hear from you. And I love your pop-ups. Are you still doing all your, your reporting on, uh, on social media? This is the start of the fifth week of lockdown. Another review on the 7th of May. The past five weeks have flown in. Don't you think, Scotty, it will tell a hundred to tell a hundred. I will also share, I will tell a hundred to tell a hundred. I will also share to all my groups on timeline too. Do, can you believe this is show 19, Nikki? We've done 19 pop-ups in the morning and Sunday night as well, last night. We had a good few hundred joined us last night, but I want the thousands to be joining us. So very, very important. Um, Ron Morrow, is Scott FM still on air? No, Scott FM, they made an absolute pig's ear of it. They sold it, and then they sold it again. It was still Scott FM, and then they sold it again. And I think now... It's, if I've got this right, it's Heart Radio. So there you are. It's been bought so many times. They had to, they had to sell it after my clue left. Stop. Oh dear, what a mess. Uh, Share Scotty, all done. Darren James Lamb, Dinky Do, I thank you. And uh, Ali Bryson, Scotty, you should join me straight after you with the wonderful Frank Walker DJ. Uh, Shaky used to be on Radio 4th. Of course, yes, Frank. I know Frank. We have Frank on here. Fantastic. 
Great guy, Ron Morris, thank you do. Uh, shared to all my Facebook friends, says Andy. Thanks, Andy. Can we get a shout out for Steve Coulter? Thank you do, says Finley Morris. Of course we can, Finlay. Gordon Robertson says a newspaper tweeted this morning that Nicola is politicized the pandemic with independence. I disagree. I think she's playing a blinder. It's not her fault. The Westminster government is a shambles. No, it is not her fault. And I see Scotland doing wonderful things and Westminster doing some very, very silly things indeed. Now, regardless of your politics, and as you know, I'm apolitical, Scotland does need to have full control over all its fiscal powers and its own money. So there we are. And they need to redefine that gig as uh, was the Secretary of State for Scotland. Great stuff. They need to redefine that um, because that job should be representing Scotland at Westminster. And uh, the Secretary should be relaying um, the Scottish Government's instructions to the Cabinet. This is what we're doing in Scotland, and you'll get the detail from the Scottish Secretary who sits in your cabinet. That sort of thing. That's what we need to be looking at, guys, because Scotland must have its interests properly represented. I, I go back to the great hurricane of 1968 when the roofs were ripped off the tenements in Glasgow and Greenock and the west of Scotland and people died. And uh, Willie Ross, who was a Secretary of State for Scotland, Willie was a Labour man, but a uh, good guy. Uh, although I think, if I remember right, Willie was a unionist. But um, he went down to Westminster and asked for money for Scotland, and they said no. <clears throat> and that's, you know, made me realise, I mean, I... I can tell you every penny that's in Scotland, so there you are. I won't tell you where um, my source is, but they are extremely reliable. Uh, Gregor Key, you need the show in your life. Thomas Peden, everyone needs Scotty McClure in their life. Uh, Cameron MacDonald, so there you are. Dinky Doo, nice to have you with us. Uh, Paul Francis Carroll. The world's top organist. I have the pipe organ here. We can maybe get a tune later, Paul Francis Carroll, and you should Skype me. The Skype should be working. Let me see. Let's see if we've got the Skype up. Yay. There we are, right. I've, I've to sign into the Skype. We'll do that in a minute. Larry Donalds is watching. Robert Rovers is watching. Robert Rovers, lovely to have you with us. Sharing, please. We haven't shared a thing. I'm falling behind now. I haven't shared a thing this morning. So there we go. Right, right, right. I've shared with the big Scotty McClue page. You know, guys, you'll get an invitation to like that page. Please do. Please do. Very important. Remember people used to say that. In the days when folks smoked, they used to say, may I smoke? They say, oh, please do. <laughs> it was all the manners thing. We need to get back to the manners thing. We should be doing that during lockdown. Thomas Peden is shouting on Darren Stevenson. Apologies for the delay. Deo gracias, Padre. Absolutely. Pax vobiscum. Uh, Harry Fitzsimmons, dinky do. Good morning. Kyrie eleison. Amen. Good morning, Susan Forrest. Mwah. And a kiss. Rosemary Max watching. Finley Morris. Gregor Key, dinky do. Russell Robertson, putting on the weight, Scotty. Russell, you, the reason I've avoided that, you will be putting on the weight. You must take care of yourself. Yes, if you can cut down on fatty foods, sugary foods, if you can cut down on alcohol, that sort of thing, you'll notice. I, I did spot, I thought to myself, Russell's piling on the beef here, you know, so there we are. But I didn't, I, I, I wouldn't be so basis to say, but now that you've brought it up, yes, I can see you're, uh, you're a wee bit puffy round the gills. Uh, good morning, Scotty. Dinky do. Robert Rovers, Dinky do. Brian Hall. Excellent. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, 
There we are. Andy Ray says, Kenny Hancock, get on the show. Absolutely, Andy. Uh, Brian Hall, good morning. Dick, you do, my good man. What a great story. Thanks for sharing that. That's now a visit on my to-do list. So you would go down, you'd go into Greenock via the bottom road that's known as, it changes title. So it's uh, Dalrymple Street when you come off the big roundabout. Um, and there's a sign to Largs and all that sort of stuff. Dalrymple Street. Then that goes on to, bear with me everybody, Brougham Street where they used to ride broughams, which was a kind of carriage, a brougham, like a barouche or a, 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 um, a governor's cart. That sort of thing. So it got onto Brougham Street, and then that goes, uh, yes, so that goes to a place called Campbell Street, where when you were up to the left, you would have found the old art skilled, formerly the West End Baths. You'll turn down to the right at the big garage on the corner, and that's Campbell Street. And if you go down there, you will see the church on your left as it enters the Esplanade. So there you are. You're heading down towards the uh, container terminal. Uh, Nikki Graham says, I've loved all your pop-ups, Scotty. You're such a joy to watch in the morning. And you cheer everybody up. Nikki, you say the loveliest things. Bless you. You cheer us all up with all your chat and your sharing and your partaking. This is the people's program. We all get together. John Simmons is watching. Thank you, do, John. Oh, lovely to have you with us. Welcome. Top man. Hi from Glenrothes, says Martin Byrne. Glenrothes, the home of the roundabout. Great to have you with us. Dinky to Glenrothes. Craig Cameron, Mike McCabe. If you've lost something in Glenrothes, you sort of show, I'm sure I've been at this roundabout before. Uh, Scotty, how would you get away with it? If I went about talking about how I popped up each morning, I think I'd get lifted. Oh, no, not at all, Gordon. You should pop up any morning. Scotty, have you attended Lanark Lanimers? Yes, the Lanimers Parade. Now, am I not right in thinking there's mast pipes and drums and they come out the side street and up the main street? What's the main street in Lanark called? And don't tell me main street. Is it the high street or is it main street? The Lanimers Parade. Is it cancelled this summer? Um, shout out for Robert Dean, please, Scotty, all the way from Oz, now living in Barhead. We'll have to do the hat for him. The hat. There we are. I need to do some more sharing, guys. I need to do some more sharing. So there we are. Now, this guy, let's share to a group, shall we? Let's share to a group. We've got to share. Everybody share. Come on, we need these figures up, guys. You know, they should be into the hundreds and thousands. Gordon Hadley, Dinky Doo, Carmack McCusker. I'm not sure if the platform actually decides what we see, if you get my meaning. So there we are. I'm not complaining, I'm just saying. Um, because it's very strange that some days thousands watch and other days hundreds watch. Mmm. That's got me thinking. I was reading during the lockdown, radio listings increased while TV watching has decreased. Your thoughts? You are 100% correct, Kareem. I don't need to give thoughts. I get a lot of the um, audience figures through for the radio stations. And I can tell you that uh, the listening has gone through the roof in the last few days. And that's why Scotty McClure should be on national radio or commercial television to bring the, the television figures back up. Yes, not a, not a bad idea. What is it about railways, and especially old railways, that gets me nostalgic? Mike McCabe, we're all nostalgic for the railways. It was a wonderful way to get about, a traffic-free way to go from one end of the country to the other, to go from John O'Groats to Land's End with a good, solid, clear run on a steam train, doing about 100 miles an hour. Fantastic. Who would not be nostalgic for that kind of travel? Now, we've got HS2. I believe the money from HS2 should be given to the BBC um, to hire me 
So there we are. I think that would be a far better way to spend it. Having said that, if they've decided to go on uh, with the railway, then so be it. But the British Railways were uh, nationalised in 1948 were quite, quite outstanding. And um, I can remember camping in Perthshire and a train rattled past up near uh, Dunkeld, a place called Dalguys, and a train rattled past and one of the guys in the tent said, that's the Jellico Express. And I said, tell me more. He said, it's a fast train from London up to Wick because it took Admiral Jellico to go to inspect Scapa Flow and obviously to get out there uh, in the fleet at the time of, uh, of, of the big battle. So there we are. So 1916, that would be, wouldn't it, when Jellicoe was fighting at the big battle. And who was on board one of the battle cruisers? The Queen's father, George VI. He wasn't George VI then. He was Prince Albert Bertie. And he was on board um, Admiral Jellicoe's, uh, no, he was on board Jellicoe's ship, I don't think. Which ship was he on? Trying to think um, if it was Admiral Beatty's ship he was on. Uh, I know Mountbatten was an Admiral Beatty ship. I think I've got that right. A little bit hazy, but the Battle of Jutland in 1916, and um, the Queen's father fought in that battle. Um, Roddy McLeod's a barhead guy. He's also a blogger. He goes by Barhead Boy. Excellent stuff. Did we do the hat for him? If he's been in Australia, we must do the hat. There we go. Fair dinkum, good morning. Dinky do to Roddy. Roddy McLeod from Oz, who's a barhead boy. Welcome, welcome. And uh, Fair dinkum from Scotty. Excellent stuff. Michael Yule's watching. It's called the High Street Scotty. It's cancelled to do our, uh, due to our, our COVID. Finlay Morris, that's a shame. So Lanimer Day in uh, Lanarkshire is cancelled. Lanark is such a beautiful town. It's quite difficult to stop in the high street though, isn't it? Can you park at all in the high street? Yes. Morning from South Yorkshire, says the wonderful John Cross and I. Hey, oh, John, lovely to have you with us, like, you know, yes, son. And uh, welcome, welcome to Scotty McClure's live cast. Connie Crawford, good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Connie. I'll change my Oz hat. Or shall we keep it? Do we keep the Oz hat? Oz hat or bonnet? Get uh, get feeding back, please. Oz hat or bonnet? I have to share in a group. The Scotty McClure group was so slow with the sharing this morning. It's terrible, isn't it? Naughty, naughty. There we are. Right. Um, Scotty McClure. I'll share with the Scotty McClure group. Although the trouble is you'll probably all get that through and you'll be watching anyway. So there we are. Please, I beg of you, do keep sharing and sharing anything from Scotty McClue that comes in. Share it and share it. Morning, Connie Crawford. Lovely to have you with us. Hello, Scotty. You make me smile, says Irene Murphy. We like that, Irene. Dig you do. I think using the railway is very expensive. I love using the car. Kareem Zachariah, it's become that way. I used to travel to school on a steam train. And a single journey was, I think, tuppence, two D, two denarii, two, um, two denarees, so two old pennies, which is one new P. So a single journey for one stop on a steam train through the longest tunnel in Scotland was one pence, right? Now that's value for money. And I can remember going to, I had a girlfriend who lived in London, a lovely girl, and she stayed in a very swish part of London. I used to go down and see her, and um, I think it was something like eight quid or 15 quid to travel down to London in 1980. Uh, so there we are. So the railway has not always been expensive. Like listening to you talking about shipbuilding, but did you know that the propeller shafts were cut and repaired in Kirkcaldy. My dad was the saw operator in a place called the Fife Forge. My granddad, this is great stuff, Andy. 
My granddad, what there, and a few uncles too, it vanished in the 80s. Well, all the big forges did. I mean, we had, it had been bombed during the war, but we had the Eagle Foundry in Baker Street in Greenock that made paddle steamer engines, Rankin and Blackmore. And there was a hospital in Greenock called the Rankin. And many a Greenockian or Gurokian would have been born in the Rankin. And that was money given by the Rankins of Rankin and Blackmore. And they stayed in Octavia Terrace, in a great big house that had belonged to the Lyles of Lyle uh, Syrup, Tate and Lyle, the sugar refiners. Mark Hampshire's watching. Uh, Mike McCabe, I loved my camping at Dalgai's, the haunted castle-like house. Dalgai's house, absolutely. The old Scottish Association of Boys Clubs, the Scottish School Boys Clubs, they all camped at Dalgai's in the Easter. And we used to sing a song that went, Dalgai's at Easter's the place for us, arriving by train and arriving by bus. From other schools, we meet other chums. Goodbye, sisters, fathers and mums. <laughs> so it was all that. Uh, Australian hats, yes, yes, yes. Uh, keep your, like, you're like off from home and away. Says Thomas Bean, so we'll keep that on today. David from Lanark, hi. Uh, Darren from Glasgow, Nicola Tom's watching. Scotty, your place always looks in pristine condition, but I bet you won't dare turn the camera around and show the rest of the room. There's probably piles of washing needing done, empty ginger bottles, and uh, pizza boxes, and the likes. Gordon, you mustn't judge everyone by your own standards. Not everybody lives like that. So there you are. Place is immaculate. Not a thing out of place, like me. Uh, Aaron Fry, I hope you're tuned in while you're out walking our dog. There's no excuse to miss this. Thomas Beaton, there is no excuse to miss Scotty McClure. Uh, the Rankin's named after DJ Rankin. Is that true, Scotty? Um, I didn't know the initials, Finlay Morris, so there you go. I'm not sure. I don't think he'd be a DJ. Uh, good morning, Scotty. Bonnie Day here in Musselburgh. Says Nicola Tom, I know Musselburgh so well. I used to shop in Musselburgh because I stayed up the hill at the Sultans. And I used to pop in and shop in Musselburgh. And Musselburgh, it was always sunny in the summer. You know, what was they got? It can be wild in the winter in the East Coast there. But Musselburgh was lovely. I loved wandering about Musselburgh. And you could park in the wee park at the back of the shops there and just... Have a wonder. It was just leisure. And I shopped also in Haddington, Hidden in Haddington. That was my other local place. Ah, the Ginny Deans, says David Miller. Well, the Ginny Deans, David, of course, was um, the old um, North British Railway. And all the North British Railway boats, before they were uh, swallowed up by the Caledonian Steam Packet Company, were called after Walter Scott characters, the Lucy Ashton, the Meg Merrilies, um, the Dandy Dinmont, very early ones. You had the Dandy Dinmont. Um, you had uh, the Ivan Ho. So there we go. Stacks and stacks and stacks of them called after Scott's characters, the Ivan Ho. What else did we have? The Meg Merrilies, we've done that one. Uh, the Lucy Ashton, which ran until 1949 from uh, 1885, built at Tam Seaths in Rutherglen. The Jeannie Deans in the 1930s, she came out, they had to modify her funnels because she used to put up a shower of ash and soot. And uh, she went down to the south coast. And I can remember walking, my sister was at a music lesson, and my dad took us walking to Gurukh Pier. And there was the Jeannie Deans tied up, 1964, I think it was. Morning, Scotty, says Alistair, dinky do. And I can remember um, he used to have these wonderful cruises. And the ladies would dress up in their best suits and things. And I remember a lady had a pink suit. And the Jeannie Deans gave a good puff of her funnels as she left Gurukh. And some suit, smuts they were called, landed in this lady's suit. And she thought, oh, that's, where's that come from? And brushed it off and it smeared. 
and I think the captain was summoned for a word. <laughs> Alistair King, dinky doo, good morning, Scott McClure. I missed you last night. Agnes forced me to listen to Go Radio, the brilliant new radio station. So there are. he doesn't like it, so I won't go into all that. Uh, but there we are. Good luck to Go Radio, I say. Uh, Scott McClure, could you play a wee song? Yes, we need a wee song now. What do we want? Um, what do we want this morning for a wee song? I'm trying to think of something. Have a, have a think, Kareem, and see if you can come up with a wee song. Let's do a wee cheery song. Uh, the high dusting needs done. David Miller, it does. I'm going to do it this morning. The top of these portraits are uh, are, are covered in oos. Uh, Stephen Mooney, oos is a different thing, isn't it? Oos used to get under beds. People say, come on, why don't you move the bed? There'll be oos under there. It was a fluff. And people used to say that you got oos in, I hope this isn't inappropriate, but you got oos in your belly button from your clothes. You got a wee bit of, of dust in there. Uh, thanks for the info about the Jeannie Deans. I didn't know that. Uh, that was her David Miller. And the, her funnels were lengthened. So there you are, the Ginny Deans for the North British Railway Company. And the Waverley, uh, the one we've got now, was built to replace one that was bombed at Dunkirk, the first Waverley. And the first captain of the Waverley was, I think, a wonderful man called John Cameron. And John uh, Cameron had been uh, on the first Waverley. So there you are. He had a distinguished service cross, John Cameron DSC, and he ended up on the Queen Mary II. And John was on the, the Queen Mary II. And um, uh, I remember uh, uh, when she came in, you could see John on the bridge. The, the, the um, bridge was quite tall, and um, you'd see John looking over the bridge of the Queen Mary. Fantastic, wonderful. John Cameron, a Greek sea captain, a wonderful a survivor of a man, you know, they were wonderful. And Captain Rob McLean of the St. Columba, uh, was it the St. Columba or the King George? I think they'd run down a submarine, a German submarine or something. Wonderful uh, acts of bravery, these skippers. And, of course, mercantile marine. I do like to be beside the seaside. Oh, Kareem, that's a bit of a... I would need to do, I've never practiced that, Fisher Row in Musselburgh, great pub grub at the Ship Inn, been many a time, Robert Rovers, I have been many a time myself. Yes, the 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 um, Ship Inn at Fisher Row, lovely, beautiful food, lovely people. The harbour there, ah, Musselburgh, stop it, you're making me homesick. We can't live in all the places or live in all the houses or drive all the cars. But I have been so fortunate in all the different places I've lived. Yorkshire, twice. Manchester, Aberdeen, Carlisle, um, Newcastle, um, Scotland, East Lothian, Glasgow, Greenock, Gurk, um, all these things. Argyle, ah, spoiled. I feel absolutely spoiled. Wonderful. Edinburgh. Uh, Michael Wallace, dinky do Keep a straight face in Edinburgh, you know, where you're driving about. I can remember um, I was going up uh, Leith Walk and uh, there was a van trying to sort of undertake me and all the rest of it. And when we got to the crossroads at the playhouse there, I had the window down and big Lord Reith, my Labrador, he was a big dog, he wasn't fat, he was just big was leaning right out the window. And this guy's leaning out the window of his works van. One of these kind of harassed guys with paint on his forehead and all that, you know, and just folded down the overalls, obviously, want to get on to the next job, doing a bit of hospital work. And he shouts in the window, you should let your dog do the driving. <laughs> and I said, well, it'd be a lot better than you. <laughs> Can you play? We're all going on a summer holiday. Um, aye. Um, maybe a bit seasonal, that one, Gordon, is it? Uh, St. Colum was the one with the three funnels. The King George one was my favourite. The King George was 1926, Denny of Dumbarton. The St. Columba was interesting. 
there had been a Queen Alexandra. There was the King Edward and there was the Queen Alexandra. And uh, the Queen Alexandra went on fire uh, in 1911, I think. And they sold her to Canada and she became the Princess Patricia for the uh, Great West, um, for the uh, Canadian Pacific Railway. So she was their steamer, the Princess Patricia. They rebuilt her. And um, McBrain's, I think it would be, ordered a new Queen Alexandra from, uh, or maybe it was Williamson McCann, I can't remember, a new Queen Alexandra from Denny's in 1912. And the Queen Alexandra was too funneled. And then I think it was after the Second World War, that's it, McBrain's bought her, called her the St. Columba and put her in for um put her in for conversion and they added a third funnel because she looked like a mini Queen Mary, the St. Columba, one of my favourite boats. I was on it, I was very young, but just on it at the end. And uh, I have a, a photograph of her up on the wall. And uh, up on the wall in the downstairs loot area, I say. And I like to ask guests, which funnel is the dummy funnel? Which funnel does not exhaust from the engine room? And they stand and they go, I, I couldn't tell you. The other two funnels are steaming. The after funnel, number three, is not. <laughs> but they don't spot that. It's very interesting. They go, I couldn't tell you. So there we go. Uh, do you think you should do a program about the Clyde and the West Highland steamers? Now, the West Highland steamers are slightly different because they were originally David Hutchison. And then um, I think David McBrain was Hutchison's nephew. Something like that. Can't remember, but there was certainly a tie up. And I'm not sure if the monument on Kerrera is to David Hutchison or David McBrain. Perhaps somebody could tell me that. But David McBrain of uh, 1908. And um, the two big paddlers, you had the Iona, built in 1864, and her sister ship, the Columba, built in 1875. And the Columba left Bridge Wharf at 7.11 every morning for Tarbert and Ardrishig. And um, the Iona and the Columba, so 1864, the Iona, 1865, 1875, the Columba. Now, they were sister ships, and they looked pretty alike, but there was a huge difference in their tonnage, in their weight. Why was that today's question? So there we are. How are we doing for time? I was going to play a wee tune, wasn't I? Let's see what we can get going here. Um, I'll see if I can do something. Would you like... Um, Alexander's Ragtime Band on the pipe organ. something a wee bit different for you. Alexander's Ragtime Band on the pipe organ. A version of it. <laughs> the ship ends closed for very far, but the moment won't be the same. I grew up in Scotland Street in Edinburgh. Nicola, Tom, you lucky, lucky girl. Uh, when the lockdown's over, you should do a meet and greet, Scotty, a night in a pub for your loyal subjects. Andy Ray, that would be quite a night. Uh, great idea, says Michael Wallace. Willie Drysdale's watching. Thank you, Willie. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome. I still haven't shared this morning. I've been very lax. I hope you all haven't. 
Uh, that's some organ you've got, Scotty. Oh, Finley Morris, you don't know a half of it. So there we go, wonderful stuff. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, I've still got the hat on. Shall I exchange my Oz hat, my jackaroo, for the bonnet? The bonnet. Oh. Oh. The bonnet. It always tumbles, doesn't it? Always tumbles down when you're trying to reach for something. to find it tumbles. There we are. The wonderful Susan Forrest. Kitsu. <laughs> what a top lady. There they are. Susan's sending me a big dose of the clap. That's fantastic. Lovely, lovely. Thank you very much. I will give everybody the clap. That's superb. Clap for the people, I say. So there we are. Clap for Scotty. Uh, Murray O'Donnell's watching. Thank you, do, Murray. You're just in time to see me exchanging the uh, the jackaroo for the bonnet. Now, I was going to say to you, very important this. I'll just do a quick share here, I think, actually. I'll just share. Share in public. It says, share to your story. We'll share to the story. I like the story. It's very interesting. You've got to work out the difference between all these things, haven't you? I'm learning and learning all the time. Morning, Scotty, says the wonderful Murray O'Donnell. Good morning, Murray. Lovely to have you with us. Sorry I'm late. Murray, please don't worry. During lockdown, there are no sanctions for late coming to Scotty McClue's morning show. You know, all I can say to you is tut, 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 tut. So there you are, but you're very, very welcome. As uh, Scott McClure, I'll say dinky do. Have a good day. I'm in the garden with the dog. Speak tomorrow. Kareem Zachariah, you top man. Have a lovely day yourself and dinky do. Have you noticed this, guys? If I want a tan, now look at my face. Check my coupon. Take a swatch at my pus, right? Watch this. I can get a tan by putting my hand up. See? <laughs> so there we are. So I don't have to book in at the tanning salon, not that you would get in anyway, I say. Uh, how are we for time? Oh, my goodness me. We've got about another five minutes. Let's use it well and use it wisely. So we'll have a game of who am I, right? Um, I'm female and I'm dead, all right? Female and I'm dead. That's all the clues I'm giving you. You've got to work out who I am. Ask me some questions, right? So ask me some questions and I'll tell you who I am. There we are. Can't believe I'm stuck in lockdown. It's my birthday tomorrow and uh, the Queen's official birthday. None of us can celebrate Alistair King. We can always celebrate. The whole nation is now going to celebrate your birthday in its hearts. And um, the whole nation is going to celebrate Her Majesty the Queen's. It's not her official birthday, it's her real birthday. Her official birthday would be the one in June with the trooping of the colour. So there you go. Are you royalty? Gordon Robertson, you'll not actually believe it, but apparently so, according to a historian. He said, Scotty, do you realise that you can be traced back to the Royal House of Scotland? It was my family that gave the monks of Paisley Abbey the land to build the abbey. Oh, there you go. Ah, marvellous stuff, isn't it? Are you human? Says Gordon Robertson. Somebody has said I was a wonderful human being. Were they being excessive? So there we are. Mike McCulloch's watching. Michael McCulloch, lovely to have you with us. Are you royalty? So I may well be royalty. Uh, Finlay Morris, Thatcher. Who's Thatcher? No, I'm not Thatcher, Finlay. No, I'm female and I'm dead, but I'm not Margaret Thatcher. Good guess, though. Um, a little bit earlier than that. Uh, me, late too. I look forward to your show every day now. Michael McCulloch, how could you? It is Monday morning, though, and perhaps people are taking a light refreshment during the lockdown. Try and not take too much. I'm not trying to be uh, in any way sanctimonious here, but I've given up the booze because um, I could then drive at any time. So I gave it up about four years ago, something like that, Christmas Day. Um, are you the late Queen Mother? I'm not Gordon Robertson, but you are kind of on the right track. I'm a little bit earlier than the Queen Mother. 
the Queen Mother would just be less than one year old when I died. Mm, so there we are. Queen Mother would be less than one year old when I died, but she would have heard quite a lot about me, I think. You know, she would have heard a terrific amount about me. So there you go. So who am I? We've still got a few minutes. You can keep popping in your answers. Uh, Provost William Henry is watching. Good morning, Provost, my lord. Lovely to have you with us. Do I call you my lord or your grace? Uh, the Queen's Gran. No, but the Queen's Gran would know me very well. The Queen's Gran was Queen Mary. That was the Queen's Granny. Gordon Robertson. Queen Victoria. I am Queen Victoria. Gordon Robertson. You're a top man. Did you not guess, do I not look like her? So there you are. Is this not a bit of a, a giveaway? That sort of idea. A wee giveaway. There we are. The Queen's great-grand. Yes, she was the Queen's great-grand. No, she was the Queen's great-great-grand. The Queen's great-grand was Queen Alexandra, King Edward VII's lovely wife, Alexandra of Denmark. So they are 10 points for Gordon. Yes, 10 points for Gordon. Oh, sorry, points. There we are. <laughs> Excellent. Finley Morris, good man. Well done, Gordon. You certainly got that one. So there we are. So Gordon, Gordon Robertson, you are now in the hot seat. And tomorrow we have to guess who you are. There we are. Excellent. So Gordon Robertson's in the hot seat tomorrow, guys. Uh, I was a bit early in years, says Andy Ray. Yes, a little bit. She died in January 1901, and she was born in uh, 1837. Am I right? No, I'm wrong. She was born in 1819. She ascended the throne in uh, 1837. Goodness me, McClure. S uh, settled down. You're the hereditary Laird of Mulgai, says Michael McCulloch. Yes, I will walk around. I'll stroll around Mugduck Castle when the lockdown's over. And people say, sorry, you haven't introduced yourself. I'm the Laird of Mulgai. Uh, Matthew Cochran, Dinky Do. There's a huge house in the estate there, and it's called Craigend Castle. And the last people, there was a guy who lived in it up until the 50s, I think. There was a zoo at Craig End. I'm not sure if somebody lived in the actual house, Craig End Castle. But before that, I think it had been the Yarrows family house. Yarrows of the shipbuilders. Um, and I think, unless I'm much mistaken, that Yarrows started off life as a London firm building on the Thames, and then realized there was such an abundance of coal and steel and space and river that they came up to build on the Clyde. Check that out, see if I am right. And Sir Harold Yarrow was a great guy, great businessman, and was the chairman of the Clydesdale Bank, and also the chairman of the Institute of Shipbuilders and Engineers in Glasgow, whose uh, building was in Elm Bank Street. I think it was 35 Elm Bank Street. And I worked in, a, in that building in Elm Bank Street because it was the home of Scottish Opera. And I worked for Scottish Opera for uh, a long time. Murray O'Donnell, my stomping ground, a Strath Blaine boy. Yes, well, you'll have walked many a time, Murray, to um, Craig End Castle. Um, Sir Eric gifted the village club to the village of Strathbrain. Sir Eric Yarrow, yes, super guy. Wonderful people, the Yarrows. And inside what's now the Scottish Opera Building is a marble memorial to the engineers of the Titanic. And I used to see it every day. Then I moved up to the Theatre Royal. Every day is a learning day with Scotty McClure. I moved up to the Theatre Royal because Scottish Opera had moved into the Theatre Royal and Scottish Television had moved out of the Theatre Royal. 
and the wonderful Bill Brown, Sir William Brown of Scottish Television for many moons, he um, oversaw um, lots of good things happening for the arts in Scotland, along with J. Ainsley Miller, the surveyor, who was the chairman of the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama, and uh, Sir Ian Maxwell Stewart, who was um, a director of Scottish television, and I think probably got Scottish opera, the engineers building in Elm Bank Street. Fantastic people, wonderful, wonderful, philanthropic, philanthropic, people. So there we are. There were so many great people associated with Theatre Royal in the early days. Alexander Gibson, the conductor, uh, Dick Telfer, who had taught music at Watson's. Fantastic stuff. Is it that time again, Scotty? Alistair King, it's that time again. I walked the dogs round Mugduk Country Park past Craig End and Mugduk Castles thousands of times. Murray, so have I. I used to take a beautiful red setter I would pick her up in Bear's Den and take her to Mugduck before I had the Labradors. <clears throat> and she was gorgeous, but you could not tire her out. You'll be off soon. I'll say thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Gordon Robertson, see you tomorrow. Think of somebody you're going to be. You're in the hot seat, and we'll all be asking you questions. See you tomorrow, Scotty. Dinky do. Robert Rovers, fantastic. To every single one of you, thanks for watching. Have a gorgeous day. Stay beautiful, stay fabulous, stay fantastic. And I'll see you all at 10 o'clock sharp tomorrow morning. Be there or be square. Dinky do.